Welcome everyone uh, to this presentation of the curl release 8.2.0 released today July 19, 2023 and um, this is one of these middle of the summer releases here in at least in my neck of the woods so welcome to this I am Daniel I figure you know that uh, I work for Wolf SSL I do curl uh, all day every day I'm sort of the lead developer of this project. So I'm going to try to go through a few details of today's release in the normal style that I tend to do. If you've seen this before, you know the drill, you know, some numbers, security things, at least one security thing this time, uh, a few changes that we've done, a few bug fixes that I want to tell you about, something about pending removals and possibly something that might come next. I say might because we don't really know. Uh, this is of course release 220, the curl, the 220th curl release since the beginning of time. And this time around uh, we had participation from 54 contributors and a lot of them new and 35 authors out of those contributors. So pretty much the rest were bug reporters. Uh, so yeah, and 20 new uh, first-time commit authors this uh, in this release cycle. Quite a lot, as usual, I should say. Um, so yeah, this time it took 50 days to do the release, since we had some, you know, we adjusted the release cycle a little bit d during the, uh, before the previous release, so that we, you know, we had some snags, so we did some patch releases and so on. Uh, but this, this means that we've now, now spent uh, 9,252 days since Curl was born. And today we have one security advisory and I'm going to preface this of course like I always do it's so that security advisories about Curl is best read and uh, dealt with on the Curl site. I insist and the claim that we provide the best information about security problems in Curl and in particular recently we've been sort of made aware that this organization called NVD they tend to um, well they make up their own security uh, severity levels for for most security problems and in, in in the Curl case in particular we can see that they usually inflate the severity levels and CFS as a scores and so on so if you read the, about them on, on other sites, you will not see them sort of valued and assessed the same way as we do. And I tend to think that we are better at assessing curl problems than many others are. So this time we have this um, F open race condition, we call it. Uh, it is the CVE 2023-32001, so reported by the user. I'd, I'm not sure how he wants to, uh, he, I think it's a he, I don't know. They want to pronounce it, uh, it's Selmelsi, Sel it's a username on Hacker1. So basically it's a race condition when Carl is told to save files uh, for cookies services data and for HSTS data it would use stat and f open in an insecure way so there was a, a possibility for a race condition so in a case where you save where you ask curl or libcurl to save a file in a directory where another user also can create files or sim links that other user could then trick the first user to do uh, to misbehave pretty much. Create or overwrite files that uh, the user did not uh, intend to manipulate. So a severity medium uh, error fixed in this release there you can of course get the patch and backport it to whatever release you want but that's not what we do in the curl project. We provide the fix in this in this release. So apart from that single security issue, we have a few new things in this release and I will tell them, tell you about them. So yes, we're extending the cockpit with some more knobs this time around. And first out, we add the 
two two new options to the command line tool and these are actually two new options to the library as well they called dash dash ca native and dash dash proxy ca native and it they are options to ask curl to use the c the native ca store on on windows this time so if you build curl to use OpenSSL and you run that curl instance on windows you can ask that curl to use the ca store the native ca store instead of the ca store usually uh, used with open society you usually use a, a ca store as a file right uh, and often you get that maybe from the curl site or whatever it's a single file usually with a hundred or something uh, ca certificates but when you, uh, you you can use these options to instead ask curl to use the native ca um, store which in windows then is stored somewhere in the windows uh, somewhere i don't know exactly where it is stored in windows but using these options you ask curl to use that ca store instead of the one on file <laughs> complicated explanation and uh, again this is on windows only and uh, for open ssl builds of curl on windows <clears throat> So moving on, we also add this new option called dash dash trace IDs. Also a, a, a subtle option, but in this case, it adds information to trace logs. So we have two options since a long time called trace uh, and trace ASCII, dash dash trace, dash dash trace ASCII. And they are uh, provided or they provide pretty much show everything that happens in curl so what is sent what is received and all the other verbose logs um, and if you add this option to that set the trace ids option you get com connection and transfer ids prepended on all the log files which is handy if you're logging a transfer involving a lot of different maybe different connections and different transfers for example if you're doing a lot of parallel transfers basically it helps out to identify which connections and transfers each of those log lines belong to so pretty much uh, you could say that they enhances trace logging and enhances the ability to use those logs to well to debug and figure out what is actually going on in, in a situation where you <laughs> maybe are looking for a problem or understanding what is happening we're adding with this is a fun change because um, basically we're replacing a typo i when i created this option uh, this is an old option i i don't remember maybe eight seven ten years ago i added this option but i added one l too many in the in the in the last word there so curl opt mail receipt allow fails i created the option with three l's instead of two which has a long time been bugging people so now we add uh, this alias which actually is correctly spelled with two l's so it replaces that typo but since we still have to provide the old one so it's a new one that is basically an alias for the old one so don't use the old one anymore if you if you can but it still exists there of course too to work from for all the older users in the world that are going to remain out there for a long time <clears throat> we also did this little subtle thing that we add support for um, the new command line option called dash dash ha proxy client ip which is a variation we, we already had the option dash dash ha proxy ha that's an option that adds it makes curl use the so-called ha proxy protocol um it's a it's a weird pro uh, no, i shouldn't say weird it's a very simple protocol that basically sends the ip address of the client uh, to the recipient basically and i it was invented by the ha proxy projects and i think that's why it's called the ha proxy protocol but anyway in, in this case you can now still use the HAProxy protocol but you can set a specific client IP address previously it would always just read what is being used right now by curl but now you can set whatever you think it should use which is convenient in in cases where you want to pass on something else than the IP address actually currently used 
uh, <clears throat> and we're adding two new these are actually related to the trace IDs option up there because we are adding two new options for reading information from from a current transfer called curl info con ID and curl info transfer ID basically they are used to implement the trace tra the dash dash trace IDs option so they can extract uh, IDs from the current connection and the current transfer typically used in the debug function callback uh, so those are the changes as you can see they are rather small niche features and there uh, as you can see we are adding four new command line options we're up to 205 55 command line options now but these are uh, well as most new options are these days there are there are niche and and maybe not for everyone but still could be nice so um, we have, we count about 122 bug fixes in this release. And I'm going to just to tell you a little bit about a few of them. I, you know, every time I do release, I, I, I have this in the release notes on the website. You can see all of those 122 and I go through them. Which of these 122 are likely to be, you know, concern people the most or maybe please people the most or you know be something to talk about and highlight a lot of the bug fixes tend to be fixing tests fix, uh, you know fixing issues in the documentations and stuff like that and they're not really worthy of talking about like this so um, here are a few of those that I think are interesting and might be the ones that could be the reason why you want to bump up to this release. Who knows? So uh, I split them up in three different pages. So we've uh, started out with, I wanted to mention that we've added a whole bunch of new examples. If you're a libcurl user or developer of uh, using libcurl, you might appreciate that we are slowly adding more examples because I think I think it's worthy worthy effort to try to make sure that we have examples showing use of every single curl easy setup option. We are far away from that goal, but in this release cycle, we sort of started to try a little harder to reach there, to go there at least. Um, we might never reach that goal, but <clears throat> we've added a bunch of new examples in a way to make sure that more options are shown with with the real world examples, how to use these options. Um, <clears throat> so hopefully this will help developers going forward. One of the nicest things I blogged about separately before, a few weeks ago at least, uh, in this release is that we have landed a lot of changes to the run test scripts and related infrastructure in the project that we they it now provides the option offers the option dash j and is actually dash j and the number and the number is the number of sub processes to run the build with so if you have a modern cpu with a lot of cpu cores you can now run the tests um, in running them in parallel using up your cores much better and doing much better um, multi-processing, multi-threaded tests, which can drastically reduce the time it takes to run through all the tests. I mean, we're talking about uh, 10 to maybe 40 times faster uh, test runs, which is awesome. Try it out if you are one of those who run the test suite. So we fixed the problem with the dash dash JSON output when there are control characters in, in the data uh, it showed them wrong before, so it wasn't uh, completely JSON syntax compatible. We fixed, or I sort of, it's basically not a fix, it's, it's just a, when I, I, um, I refactored the config parser a few releases ago and made it sort of a little bit more clever to, to some extent or, or in, in some ways, and when I did that, I uh, put a or a, I capped the maximum line length limit in the config parser to 100k because I figured 
wait, wait who would ever use a, a config line that is longer than 100k so it uh, seemed to just just put a artificial cap at 100k to just you know avoid mistakes catch bad stuff but it turns out of course that some people are actually generating config files with longer lines than 100k so now i upped that limit to 10 megabytes instead to at least let those users who had this problem this time sort of <laughs> work around that so now they were uh, those use cases work again maybe someone will run into another problem then with 10 megabytes if you generate it uh, so quite possible but i have another fix for that coming in a future release and i will talk about that some at some other point maybe I, i'll get into it a little bit later about future things but anyway so now you can you now you at least can use 10 megabyte line uh, 10 megabyte lines in config files for curl going forward uh, more HTTP related things so we fixed a number of smaller and larger fixes in the HTTP 2 handling you know we had these uh, rather large HTTP 2 HTTP 3 refactor of things in the last uh, well eight months so or so um, and as a fallout from that we had a bunch of regressions and tiny uh, tweaks that uh, people found out that we needed to do and we've done a lot of them for this release in, um, yeah uh, and 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 one optimization we did was that uh, curl now when you send for example an http post with http2 uh, we are much more likely to put the header frame and the data frame together in the same TLS frame that run goes out or even in the same TCP segment actually uh, slightly more clever just an optimization uh, and we also fixed uh, HP 3 related things actually uh, this one says upload e again handling and that's true and we also pretty much did the same thing for HP 2 so we fixed e again handling which both were problems that some people figured out when doing uploads to, with HP2 or HP3, sometimes stalling on the very last few bytes in an upload. Uh, very annoying, but should be better now. If you have problems still, tell us about it. Um, <laughs> I also had this weird bug or, or sort of just wrong calculation that we have this check in curl that prevents curl from accidentally sending too long cookie header lines basically we prevent that because a lot of servers take that as some kind of problem and will return a 400 uh, HP response if we send a too long cookie header so we have this check make sure that we don't you know append all if we have more cookies they would create a too long cookie header so we just add enough cookies to make sure that we stay within the limit but that limit check was wrong it used the wrong check so it was could be off by several hundred bytes it was just a steal a mistake it's fixed now basically the check was for the entire request and not for that single header line so the, if you had a huge request it would then include that all the other header lines in that calculations um, so we also then went back and a few releases ago I was so happy to say that we removed the use of custom memory functions when using libssh2 which this is really a, a subtle thing but basically when when we use libssh2 we can t ask it to either you know use the normal memory functions uh, as it, anything would do or we can tell it to use custom ones and the custom ones would be our uh, basic callbacks to the functions we use and I removed them a while ago to make sure that uh, Valgrind or and the torture testing in curl would run much faster because maybe we shouldn't take I mean since we then for torture tests we will now test libssh2 a lot and it feels like the wrong thing for us to do because it's not our project but we had to put them back because the API in libssh2 actually is not really it has some flaws I would say so we had to put them back to avoid crashes in libssh2 with libssh2 we had a regression in in security transport uh, tls transfers in in related to end of well 
end of connection basically when the transfer uh, when the server closes the connection we didn't always handle that properly we improved times or i would say we have this generic get time function in curl and now we're using this monotonic raw clock if available on your platform to <laughs> because uh, however amusing it sounds like the clock monotonic is not entirely always monotonic so there's this clock monotonic raw that is more monotonic than the monotonic one meaning that it never uh, steps backwards in time so it's a, a always advancing uh, clock and it is important in some use cases in particular in use with ngtcp2 because it really it does not like clocks that goes uh, clocks that go backwards in time yeah. Uh, so we try to avoid that this is of course not available on all platforms i think it's available on linux and mac os uh, so there will be some platforms where where the clock can still go backwards in time at some points and that might be a little bit of a snag but it shouldn't be a big problem so this is a tiny enhancement really uh, we fixed the url api to avoid and basically you you could set the path without a leading slash and the the U, url api is a little bit when you extract and set the path it includes the leading path from the U, uh, url right so it's basically always a leading path a slash in the path so if you have a path there will be a leading slash so if you set the path without a leading slash it would then generate a bad URL if you would extract the URL from that uh, using the URL API, just a bug. So now if you set a uh, path without a slash, curl will put it in there for you because it'll sort of assume that is what you intended. We also fixed another parser snag in the URL API. So, you know, a, a URL starts with a scheme, the HTTPS colon thing, and uh, well, the HTTPS a URL might start with HTTPS colon slash slash and HTTPS is then the scheme. And the scheme must start with an alphabetical character, uh, not some of the others that are then also accepted as part of the scheme, but they cannot start the scheme. So now we parse that a tiny bit better than before. Some of these changes, of course, were, were um, some of these flaws, of course, are, are nowadays found uh, by the Trural tools that people are using, so we figure out a lot of these tiny URL bugs with that tool. So we are going to remove things. We are currently in a heated discussion on the mailing list about removing NSS and GSKit as TLS libraries. We'll see what happens, but that's the plan. There are two PRs to do this. Um, they have not been merged. They will not be merged until the future window open and who knows we might um, backpedal on some of those decisions we'll see we haven't taken that step yet we will remove support for um, the legacy Ming W version 1 in September I don't think that is anything to discuss that will not sort of cause any uproars I'm pretty sure and we will remove support for space separated no proxy patterns in next year long time from now and going forward, we plan to do another release, of course. Most likely we will call this 8.3.0 because we have um, changes in the pipeline that we probably want to merge. And those changes will most likely cause us to bump the minor number to three. We'll see about that. We uh, yeah, I'll talk about the release uh, cycle in a second. But first, I wanted to mention a few of the things that might show up in the next version. We have a bunch of PRs being uh, created. <clears throat> so we have this long time coming PR for support for IPFS gateways. So it's not native support, it's gatewaying IPFS from the curl tool to IPFS gateways. Uh, might be coming. There's this uh, long uh, discussion about adding support for .onion 
in the name resolver. So we a while ago we prevented curl from resolving host names, uh, ending with dot onion, which is an RFC that says that is how we should do it. But then of course someone um, is relying on the ability to resolve them. So there's this discussion on how to do it and if we should do it and so on. So if you have an opinion about dot onion and name resolving, do get involved and tell us your opinion and. and I don't know where we will land with this, but it's um, it's work in progress. We have this new concept called command line variables. I talked about this is what I what might be a way for people to circumvent the 10 megabyte uh, line limit in config files going forward. This is a kind of a fancy way to to assign variables and use variables in command lines and in config files. I have a, a pretty advanced PR file for this already, so I'm pretty sure we will merge this. It's it's an also a way to use environment variables and include data from environment environment variables into config files. So it, it makes config files and command line uh, using curl more advanced and, and kind of cool. There's also coming support for this operator in the dash w option, the dash dash write out. So basically dash dash write out as it works right now, it writes the output to standard out or standard air. Um, and it usually includes details from your transfer, right? Uh, you know, response codes or um, timing data or a, a lot of different variables, right? I think we have 30, 40 variables by now. And, and with this new feature, you can then also opt to save that data to a specific file name instead of standard out or standard, standard out. And you can actually save it to multiple files, right? Because you can use that percent file operator many times. So we can actually save it to many different files if you want to or and different information in different files so kind of fancy there's this proposed pr again i should say i think it's the third time we see this sort of proposed in a pr is to add libproxy support to curl libproxy is a library that detects um, what kind of proxy your system is using or what not only what kind of but which exact proxy you're using so it's meant to then dynamically discover oh you're using a proxy curl should use that proxy too and get uh, and then use the network that way i think there's more to it and more work more work to do before this is ripe for merch but if you this is something you're interested in get involved i also saw that someone else proposed another library instead of libproxy for this for reasons so we'll see maybe there's a, a um, competition to be had there and we i mean it's not there yet but there's a discussion on how to and if we should do it how to do it and if we should do it we i want to drop support for nss and i want to drop support for gsk i mentioned that already in the removal section and there's a discussion um about them and if this is going to happen or how and what uh, and, and so on so let's see where we end up with that so these are at least all possible things that we might have in the next release we might also do completely different things because people propose different changes all the time and your changes are most welcome just submit them the next version is as i said most likely going to be called 8.3.0 and we are targeting that for september 13 that's in eight weeks from now we are always updating this url with a pending development the release notes for the pending release so you can always go there to check what we have merged so far what what's going to be included in in that particular release it is updated well, semi-automatically at least. So we have this eight week release cycle. So that's why we know that there's, there's eight weeks to the next release, right? So today it is the release Wednesday. And in 10 days, we allow 10 days for things to cool down. Meaning if you find a serious, well, if whatever problem you find 
you submit a bug report and if we deem that one of those problems are serious enough we might do a patch release within this cooling down period to make sure that the latest version is not riddled with silly bugs so anyway after 10 days that's a saturday right since we always release on, on wednesday so <laughs> 10 days saturday we open the feature window we have that open in 21 days then there's a sunday again so sorry it's called saturday uh, and then we have a feature freeze for 25 days and then we have a release wednesday again and today as you can see in the in the calendar it's july 19 that we open the feature window then if things go well on july 29 we close the feature window again on august 19 and if things then work according to this nice uh, uh, idealistic world we do sh we ship the next release on september 13 and then we start over again so this is the um, always you know rotating eight week release cycle of curl and of course i sell curl support so if you use curl support for your commercial things you know applications your uh, company consider paying me for support and i will help you make sure that curl is used the most pos the best possible way for you if you find or suspect problems bugs in curl submit them here and you know this includes silly things like you know spelling errors in the uh, documentation or uh, weird stuff on the website maybe not website in this particular repository but yeah anyway submit your problems if you happen to submit them in the wrong repo we can move them for you so whatever problem you have issues you detect submit submit them if you have a security problem or suspect that you have detected a security problem in curl i encourage you to submit them here on hacker one dot com slash curl and we will reward you with a with money if you are right and if you're wrong that's fine too we will just you know handle it as a bug uh, or close it or whatever if you suspect the problem uh, is the security related that's why we do it we sort of try to disclose the problems uh, responsibly and you know not hurt existing users more than we have to these are our fine sponsors as of this month july 2023 the top ones are the ones that have been with us for a long time they sponsor infrastructure and um, provide more financial support the ones in the bottoms are the silver ones we love them all for being awesome and making sure that we can do what we want to do in the curl project so yeah this is curl 8.2.0 july 19 I hope to uh, stay away from the release videos for another eight weeks and see you again in September. Um, until then, bye.